Hi guys, this is Madhav. I've been really fascinated recently by this algorithm called the GZIP compression algorithm, GunZip compression algorithm. It's one of those things that works very well, but also very simply. And I think that even if you don't know too, too much about computers, you'll be able to understand and appreciate why it's so nice. So as a motivating problem, you might have seen this file format called a CSV file, a comma separated value file. It's called this because you have commas separating different values. And this is a file format that's very, very suitable for the GunZip compression algorithm. And by the end of the video, you'll see why. So let's talk about how much space this data is taking up before it has been compressed with gzip which we're going to do basically by hand because i want to show you exactly how the algorithm works in this simple example and then we'll figure out you know how much savings we get at the end compared to this initial amount now the first thing to know here is that when the computer stores text like this it doesn't really know words like date or snack. Instead, it looks one character at a time where it will see, you know, just this big zoomed in focus on just the D or the A or the T or the E and so on. Another complexity is that the computer doesn't really store letters very well. Instead, it uses a file format like ASCII which it doesn't matter what it stands for just know that you go from let's say a lowercase o to a number like 111 so it's kind of like this code that the computer created for each of these characters so that you know the space goes to 32 the comma goes to 44 the capital D goes to 68, every single character is now stored as a number in the computer. So where you and I see, let's say, all of these characters, well, we see words, the computer only sees one character at a time and it only sees numbers that are codes for the different characters. There's one last complication involved, which you already see in the ASCII table which is that a number like 111, that is a human number. It is a decimal number. Those are the numbers that we're used to. But the computer stores that number as binary, which means that it's still the same number. It's just that the number uses only zeros and ones for digits instead of, you know, digits that are one through nine. So in our case, it might mean that a number like 68, it would actually be stored as eight digits that are either zeros or ones. So now that we understand that, we can actually think about how many characters are being taken up. How many numbers does the computer have to store when we don't compress the file that we have over here? We know that each of these characters is going to be turned into a number and each of those numbers is going to have eight digits, zeros or ones. So we can just count the number of characters here, which I think is about 90, and then multiply by eight digits per character. And we get that we have to store 720 numbers for this uncompressed data. Okay, so this is the motivating problem. We have 720 characters being stored to represent this information, can we do better with the GunZip algorithm? Well, intuitively, you might have some ideas already about how to do better. For instance, you might see that all of these dates are, you know, January 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Well, if all the, the dates are in January, why even bother writing January? What if we just wrote, you know, the dates as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7? Okay, that's an improvement. Now we have fewer characters and that means fewer numbers for the computer to store. We could also, let's say, 
go for these apple, banana, cherry things, take these words and write A for apple, B for banana and C for cherry. Seems simple. And already you can see that we're starting to do better. We're starting to turn the characters that we had into a lower count so that we have fewer numbers for the computer store in the end. The only issue we have right now is that we've lost some information when we did that. You know, you and I know that A is for Apple, but if I just copy pasted this text and sent it as an email to someone else, they would have no idea what this what this thing says, you know, date, snack, what the snack is A, what is A as a snack? So what we have to do is we have to make sure that if we use codes like this, A for apple, B for ball, not ball, B for banana, then we have to write that down so that the others know, you know, hey, we are using this code, say, C is for cherry or A is for apple. So this is basically how the GunZip compression algorithm is going to do the majority of its work. It's going to figure out what are repetitive parts of the text that we have. For instance, if we're saying apple, 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 then it's just going to write apple once and then use a smaller character to be able to replace that long word in every instance. So that's the key concept to understand. Gun zipping is about taking repetitive long words, storing them in only one place, and then in all of the other locations, we just store a small code that represents the long word. Now, there are some complications with this, as ever. The first complication is that as I mentioned, the computer doesn't know what these characters are. So it's going to need to store the codes that I just showed you for each of these characters. So first we could just, you know, go about replacing that. Instead of A, we write this long number over here and down here, over here and over here. Instead of B, we write this thing and here and instead of C we write this thing all right so that's a little bit more realistic one of the things that you might notice as an issue here is that when we use cherry when we when we use this code for cherry we're not really doing much except you know just using this code once and that's kind of not useful at all because like now instead of just having cherry in one place which would be over here we have to write this code and this code and that cherry still in one place so this is a key insight we don't use gunzip codes to replace words that aren't repetitive the more repetitive the words, the better, which is why GunZip is suited for comma-separated value files, where you have a bunch of rows that might have the same values again and again. So that's a key principle to keep in mind. Should you GunZip a file? It depends. Does it have a lot of repetitive words? If it doesn't, then don't have, you know, character codes for that repetitive word. Instead, just write out cherry. So that's what I did here. I removed that code and now we just have cherry. Now, the last thing to think about is that even though we have created, you know, these codes for apple or banana, they're still kind of long. You know, each of these is eight digits because it represents a character like A or B. Could we do any better here? Could we make these codes themselves shorter? Now, to do this, we're going to use a process that GunZip uses, which is borrowed from another compression technique, 
This compression technique is called Huffman coding. And what it specializes in is producing codes for these repetitive words that are very short. So we're going to reuse Huffman coding in the GunZip algorithm. Here's how we're going to do it. First, we're going to count all of the words that we have. So these are the words that we have in this CSV file up here. So I counted all of the English words and how many times they occur. So apple was occurring four times, banana had two occurrences, and all of these other English words, they had one occurrence. After I've made a table like this, counting each unique word and its frequency in the entire text file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create something that has a complicated name. It's called a binary tree, but it's a very simple idea. I'm basically going to have like a diagram where at each step, I'm going to have two choices. So in this case, I'm going to take the most frequent words and I'm going to start by putting them at the top. So on this first level, I have the choice between the two most frequent words, apple or banana. If I choose apple, I'm going to assign it a code zero. If I choose banana, I'm going to assign it a code one. Then for each of these, I have more levels. So I choose the next most common words. So from apple, I'm going to choose either cherry or date. If I choose cherry, zero on the left, one on the right. And with banana again, I only have one more word left. So I only have a branch on the left. And I'm going to call that snack. Since it's on the left side, we assign it a zero. Now, what's the point of creating a diagram like this? Well, the point is, if I now want to get a code for a character, I don't just need to use like a predetermined um, code of eight numbers, eight binary bits. Instead, I can just be like, okay, I'm going to start at the top of the tree and then move towards the word that I want. So for example, let's say I wanted the code for apple. Well, I start at the top and I go this way because this is where Apple is on the left. And it's the first thing on the left. So I just put in that zero. So there we are. We have a code for Apple. Next, if I want to, let's say, find the code for banana. Well, what I'm going to do is at the top, instead of going left, I'm going to go right because that's where banana is. It's in the right words direction. And I got to banana. It has a code of one. So I'm just going to put a one here. I could continue like this. Let's say I wanted to get to cherry. Well, I would go this way and then this way again. So I get two zeros, a zero from apple and then a zero from cherry, the zero. For date, it would be zero and then a one, because I got zero from this apple and then one from the date. And then finally for snack, I have one from banana and then zero. So we have one here and then zero. This is a small example, but notes the very interesting thing about this, which is that the codes that we have, which disappeared on me sadly <laughs> the codes that we have note how they are shorter for apple and banana the most common words right so they have the highest frequency apple and banana they get shorter codes than the ones that have the words that have a lower frequency these have two digits these have only one so this is the advantage of Huffman coding. It creates codes that we can use that are going to be shorter for the most repetitive words, which means when we have to insert a code here and then here and here and then here, the more repetitive codes are going to take up less space because they're going to be shorter. The longer codes, they can take up more space because, you know, they're 
now it's going to be used as often so we're not wasting as much space with longer codes so that's the genius of Huffman coding not such a bad concept as we already noted it doesn't make much sense to put in codes for like you know a word that only occurs once that's not saving space that's just taking up more space so instead I'm only going to use these codes that we just generated for apple and banana so if we go back to the problem that we had before right we have these long codes for apple and banana now we're going to use our Huffman codes where apple is one apple is zero and banana is one so I just went through and replaced each of those long numbers above with either zero or one for apple or banana and you can see this is much better as I said already uh, we don't have computers you know storing characters so just to give you a realistic sense of what the file would actually look like on a computer I'm going to replace each of these characters with the binary codes that I showed you that you know each of these characters um, are represented as in a computer so if I continue downwards I just put in a space between each binary character you don't need to do that in a real file this is just so that it's a little bit less of a mess to parse than it already is but you can see I went from like 0 equals apple to 0 here is the code for capital A then uh, the P another P L and then E and then the same thing for banana all of these represent the characters before over here you have date comma as snack so those words are represented here and now in the rows you know the one apple two banana three apple those rows now you can clearly see how much space is being saved here where the, these rows they have codes for them because they have apples and bananas but these rows over here this is the row for cherry you can see how much longer it is when it doesn't have a short code that we created so this is how you can visually see you know hey much longer line this hasn't been compressed with gunzip and then all of these lines are shorter because they have been compressed so this is a very simple example of what a gunzip file would actually look like it's just a bunch of bits but the key idea is that you're creating some you know codes for reused words and you're going to insert those codes which are going to be much shorter than the long words throughout the file and in the end i counted this was 386 characters which you know compared to 720 is pretty good and this was just a very you know short kind of um simple example with just like eight rows of text so in real life when you have a csv file we have which has like hundreds to thousands of rows of text and even more fields than this you can really start to imagine how the gunzip compression algorithm would be useful personally at my jobs i use it all the time and i get 99 percent compression easily on most files and at the end of the day it's not so it's not so bad not so difficult to understand you know just create some codes replace repetitive words so I hope you can appreciate the simple usefulness of this algorithm that you're probably using right now even if you don't know it